What is going on everyone, my name is Codemore and welcome back to Electronics episode 29. In this episode we are going to learn what a binary half adder is, we are going to learn how to make a half adder circuit, and we are going to design it, and then we are going to build that circuit. So, what is a binary half adder? Well, it's basically going to be the simplest form of adding binary numbers together. In fact, it's going to be such a simple addition machine that it's only going to be able to add single digit binary numbers together. So we are going to build a circuit that takes two inputs. It's going to take some input A and some input B. And it's just going to add those two binary digits together. So if we input two low signals, two zeros, it's just going to add zero plus zero in binary. What is zero plus zero in binary? It's zero, of course. So the sum of that is zero. Now what if we changed our inputs? If we did 0 plus 1, well of course 0 plus 1 is also 1 in binary. The next case over, 1 plus 0, well that's just the same thing, just reversed, so that's still equal to 1 of course. Then we have the special case of 1 plus 1 in binary, and we know that this equals 2, or 1, 0 in binary. Now remember when we were adding numbers, say we added a 1 plus a 1 in binary. We know that 1 plus 1 equals 2, so we bring down the 0, and then we move the 1 over to the next column. Well, this 1 right here, that is called the carry bit, or rather the carry output of this addition of this column of numbers here. And it's called that because you carry that digit from the 2, that 1 0 that we get from this, we carry that 1 over to the next column to continue the addition. So 1 plus 1 is 2, or 1, 0. So we are going to call this 0 the sum of 1 plus 1, but we know that we had to carry over an extra 1 to the next column over. So we are actually going to need two outputs from our binary half adder, because in the case of 1 plus 1, we have to indicate that this zero isn't our full answer. No, we actually have an extra one over here that we have to carry on to other additions if we were to eventually, in the next video, add larger and larger binary numbers together. Now, of course, in the above three cases here, these are all such small additions, zero, one, and one, that there is no carry out. That carry out bit can be said to be zero because if we take a look at zero plus one in binary over here, we get 0 plus 1 is 1, and we never carried over a bit. We can kind of imagine that there is a 0 for our carry out here. It doesn't affect the answer, right? 0, 1 is the same as just 1. So that is our truth table about what our binary half adder is going to do. All it does is add two single digit binary numbers together, and it gives us some sum, and then a carry out value if necessary. So we can add numbers up to 2. And it might not seem like a lot, but this circuit is going to be used in the next video to create a binary adder that can be expanded to as many binary digits as we want. Okay, so how can we design a circuit for this? So we know that our half adder circuit is going to require two inputs. So let's just begin by saying we'll have input A and we'll have input B just as wires. They're either going to be low or high, 0 or 1. And we also know that our half adder is going to have two outputs, a sum bit and then a carry out bit. And this carry out bit will kind of, for today, represent the second decimal position in a binary number. So 1, 0 would be represented by a sum bit of 0 and a carry bit of 1. You can think of it as our second binary position. All right, so we have two inputs and we're gonna have two outputs. Let's focus on getting one output correct to begin with. Let's focus on the sum bit. So the only time that the sum bit has to be one is if one or the other of A or B is one, but they can't both be one because we still need a zero in that case. Does this look familiar to any of the logic gates that we learned? I think it does. If we look just at this portion of the table, this is identical to the exclusive OR gate that we learned about. 
So we can simply take our A and B inputs and put it through an exclusive OR gate to get our sum output. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll make A and we'll make B go on in to an exclusive OR gate, which looks kind of like this. And that is all we need for our sum output. OK, great. We're almost there. Next, we have to handle our carry output, the second position, the second bit position of our addition circuit. So we know that the only time that we want a 1 for this carry bit is when both A and B are also 1. And I said the answer right there in that sentence. We just have to use an AND logic gate. Because remember, an AND gate only gives us an output of 1 if both A and B are 1. Otherwise, it'll always give us zeros. So all we have to do is put A and B through an AND gate. So we'll go ahead, we'll take our same B input, and I'll just move it down over here. We'll take our A input, and we'll kind of move that down as well. And this will all be fed in to a single AND gate. And this will become our carry out bit. And that's all we have to handle. We know that we can have our two inputs, A and B here. And we will always generate the proper sum and carry outputs using this circuit. And this is what we call the binary half adder. Now again, it can't add any giant binary numbers or anything like that. That's going to come in the next video, but this will help us do that. All right, so I've already built the circuit out, and it's kind of similar to the circuit that I built in our logic gate video, just with obviously the AND gate added to it. So here I have my XOR gate chip. Uh, of course, I'm only using the first three pins. So pins one and two are A and B inputs, and the third pin is the output of the XOR chip. So I just have this here wire being my A input, and this wire being my B input. And those are just connected to uh, disconnected wires for now. Um, then I have the output of my XOR chip through a resistor to an LED. Now this will end up being my sum bit, because this is the output of the XOR gate. We said that that would be our sum output. Next, I route the exact same inputs, so I have another wire going over here to the first pin of this chip. Now this is the 74LS08 chip, and that is very similar to the XOR gate chip, but it's an AND gate chip. It has four separate AND gates in it. Again, I'm only using one of the AND gates, so pin 1, that's connected to my A input, the same exact A input. Pin 2 is connected to my B input, and then pin 3 is the output, which leads to another resistor and LED. And of course, this will be my carry out bit, because that is the output of the AND gate for the circuit. All right, so let me move this a little bit out of the way here, and let me connect my inputs. We'll start off with adding 0 plus 0, so ground plus ground, of course. And remember, we have input A and B. So let me go ahead and power on the circuit here. And once I plug it in, you will see that nothing happens. And that is correct, because 0 plus 0 is 0 with no carry. OK, great. Let us try 0 plus 1. So I'll move input B to power. And we see that we get our sum bit illuminated, but our carry bit is still off. So 0 plus 1 equals 1 with no carry. That's correct. If we do the opposite, we should get the exact same thing. So if we move input A instead, if I can get it out, and move that over to positive power, now we have 1 plus 0. And that, of course, still gets us the same thing, a sum bit of 1 and no carry. And of course, if we add 1 plus 1, so if I move input B also to positive power, now we have 1 plus 1. And we have no sum bit. Remember, our sum bit is 0 in this case but we have our carry bit illuminated, meaning that we have the value of 2. So this is our half adder. Now, of course, we still have the issue of if one of these is disconnected, we kind of go into an unknown state. Um, for instance, it can kind of 
flicker between both inputs based on what's unplugged and what's plugged in. But we're going to be covering pull down and pull up resistors, which will solve this problem essentially in other videos. But if you'd like to solve that problem yourself, you're going to want to search for pull up or pull down resistors. Just thought I would mention that for the people who are interested in exploring the subject a little bit more. Anyways, this is our binary half adder, and in the next video we are going to expand upon this, that way we can add larger binary numbers together. Such as, I don't know, an 8-bit binary number. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.